Hello and welcome back to video 14 for Topic 3 Networks and here we're going to be describing the characteristics of wireless networks. This is for the IB Diploma in Computer Science. As you can see, we're on the third topic of the four core topics. So halfway through, we've done network fundamentals, data transmission. Now we're halfway through wireless networks. Okay, nearing the end. Okay, so by the end of this lesson, what we're hoping that you're going to be able to do is describe the characteristics of Wi-Fi networks, explain the characteristics of WiMAX networks, describe 3G, 4G, and 5G mobile networks, understand LTE and its role in mobile communication, and discuss the future of wireless networks and their potential. Okay? So wireless networks transform communication and data exchange across the world. We've talked quite a bit about wireless networks in the previous video, where we were explaining about the term WAP, about repeaters, so on and so forth, and how to connect, how to build a wireless network. But now what we need to do is look at the different technologies that have evolved to meet increasing demand for faster, more reliable and wider reaching connectivity. Key technologies do include, as we just said, Wi-Fi, WiMAX and mobile um, networks, 3G and 4G and 5G. It's not no longer emerging, it's, um, it's here, it's in place. Further networks promise even more connectivity, especially with the rise of the Internet of Things, IoT. Okay. So let's start with Wi-Fi, IEEE 802.11, which is its standard name. Wi-Fi allows devices to connect wirelessly to a local area network, a LAN, and the internet within a limited area. Okay. Frequency operates on a 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz band. Its range is limited to short distances, typically up to 100 meters indoors and ranges from 11 megabits per second, yeah, Wi-Fi 1, to 10 gigabits per second, Wi-Fi 6. Its usage primarily used in homes, businesses, and public places like cafes. Um, encryption methods include WPA2 and the newer WPA3. Okay, so that's Wi-Fi. Now, WiMAX is the Worldwide Interoperability for Microwave Access, WiMAX. May not have heard of this term before, but it's designed for long range wireless networking across cities or even countries. It operates on a range of bands, including 2.5 gigahertz and 3.5 gigahertz. The data range, it can provide speeds of up to one gigabit per second for fixed stations, 100 megabits per second for mobile devices. And it can cover, as we said before, a radius of up to 50 kilometers. It's often used in areas lacking reliable broadband infrastructures, more common in developing countries. It's cheaper to deploy than LTE, but not as widely used. Okay, so the old 3G mobile network, it's third generation of mobile networks provided improved data transfer over 2G. Most of you will not remember that. Frequency operates on various bands depending on the country. 800 megahertz, 900 megabits, etc. The data rate up to 200 um, kilobits per second, and it's used for mobile internet, video calls, and location-based services. It's more secure as well than 2G. It's newer technology, or it was. Limitations relatively slower compared to modern networks like 4 and 5G. It was a technology that helped to build our cities. Okay, 4G. Fourth generation, see here a bigger city, a little bit like Dubai. It's a fourth generation of mobile net networks designed for high speed internet and IP based communication. Data rate up to one gigabit per second for stationary users and 100 megabits per second for mobile users, e.g., in vehicles. Application streaming, high definition videos, online gaming, fast browsing, and all that kind of thing. Faster and more efficient than 3G, but uses more energy. Okay, but then we move on to LTE, long-term evolution. LTE, long-term evolution, is a 4G mobile network standard designed to provide high-speed data. Download speeds of up to 300 megabits per second, upload speeds of 75 megabits per second. Range similar to other mobile devices, LTE can cover large areas, especially with LTE-A. Advantages, it supports seamless communication for mobile devices. Um, it competes with WiMAX, but is more widely used, especially in urban areas. So that's LTE. So WiMAX versus LTE comparison table, as you can see here, data rate a gigabit per second, 
um, whereas LTE is 300 megabits per second, range 50 kilometers, and LTE is obviously less than that. It's not compatible or backward compatible with 2G and 3G, whereas LTE is. It's cheaper for network setup, LTE is more expensive. It's common in developing regions where as LTE is used worldwide, okay? Obviously, we then move on to the latest technologies such as 5G, and this is the fifth generation of mobile networks, still under development and deployment. S certain areas, certain countries in the world do not have 5G. Uh, data rate expected to reach 10 gigabits per second, significantly faster than 4G, that is the plan. The application, the Internet of Things, IoT, smart cities, self-driving cars, still not arrived yet, and real-time virtual reality. Security and hand security protocols to support large numbers of devices. It's aimed at connecting billions of devices worldwide. That is a plan for 5G. Okay. As you can see here, things have increased and decreased in terms of latency um, significantly. 2G, very, very slow, only used for calls and SMS. 3G, we're starting to use it for internet browsing and basic videos and basic gaming. Whereas 4G became sort of the standard high definition video streaming and gaming. Okay, ultra HD videos come with 5G, virtual reality and smart devices all take advantage from 5G technologies. Okay, it's extremely fast, one to 10 gigabytes per second. Okay, it was introduced in 2020, where as you can see, it's sort of gone each decade, the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, 2020s. In terms of latency, latency is sort of lag, how slow it is to get from source to where you are, okay? So if there's a high lag, it's basically, it takes a long time to get from its source to you. Whereas very low latency, near real time, it's basically as soon as it's sent, it's arriving with you, okay? So we've got a, a VR game or, or, or a VR video, and it's there, it's happening in real time, okay? Wireless sensor networks, WSN networks. It's used to collect data for environmental and security monitoring. Application, healthcare, surveillance, underwater sensing, environmental sampling. Okay, and it consists of multiple sensor nodes communicating wirelessly. Requires local and global coordination for distributed sensing. Okay, so just something to consider there, wireless sensor networks. Okay, so what's the future of wireless networks? Well, 5G, well underway. Lots of countries have adopted 5G as a standard now. And beyond this, we expect tactile internet and 6G networks. These future networks will enable even more data throughput, potentially reaching one terabyte per second. Wireless sensor networks will be more integrated with cities and industries, making smart cities and IoT more prevalent. Future innovations will focus on low latency, high capacity and sustainability. In terms of social and ethical issues, we've got connectivity. Wireless networks enable global connectivity between different locations, making collaboration and communication easier. Social impact. The rise of wireless technologies changes how people interact, work and socialize, bringing both opportunities and challenges. Ethical concerns, security, privacy and the digital divide are key concerns. For example, access to high-speed networks may still be limited in rural or undeserved areas. So in conclusion, in this video, we have explored the characteristics of key wireless networks, including Wi-Fi, WiMAX, 3G, 4G, 5G and LTE. Wireless technologies continue to evolve with each new generation offering faster, more reliable connectivity. Future networks like 5G and beyond will continue to reshape the way we communicate and interact with the world. Okay, watch this space. It's only going to get faster and faster. So as always, I've got three questions. Question one, define the term WiMAX and state its primary purpose. Question two, describe two characteristics each of 3G and 4G LTE networks. And question three, explain how 5G technologies differ from Wi-Fi and WiMAX in terms of use cases, speed, and range, okay? If you want to have a little go at these yourself, pause the video. If not, we'll have a little look now. Okay, question one, WiMAX worldwide, you don't need to remember this, 
WiMAX or Worldwide Interoperability for Microwave Access is a wireless communication standard designed to provide long range broadband connectivity. Okay, its primary purpose is to deliver high speed internet access over large areas, often as an alternative to wide connections like DSL or cable. Okay, two characteristics for 3G and for 4G. We've got 3G supports mobile internet access, video calls, and mobile TV with speeds up to 200 kilobits per second. It's more secure compared with early generations with widespread use in telephony and GPS services. 3G, though, in most developed areas, is you'd, you'd consider it to be obsolete, whereas 4G the LTE offers much higher speeds, certainly than 3G, up to 100 megabits per second for high mobility devices and 1 gigabits for low mobility devices. Fully IP based, focus on mobile broadband access and not supporting traditional circuit switched services like voice calls. Okay, and finally, uh, question three, six marks. We've got to explain what 5G is. Designed for ultra fast speeds up to 10 gigabytes per second, low latency, and massive connectivity, supporting future technologies like um, IoT, smart cities, uh, and autonomous vehicles. Works, very, works over vast areas ideal for connecting a large number of devices with real-time data transmission needs. A Wi-Fi, this is a um, short-range wireless networking, wireless networking technology, and it's designed for local area networks, LANs, typically offering high-speed data transfer between a building or a specific area, primarily used for indoor wireless internet access. And then finally, we've got WiMAX, which offers long-range wireless broadband, over large geographical areas, we said around 50 kilometers, uh, providing connectivity to users without access to, to wired networks, especially in remote regions. Speeds are lower compared with 5G, but serve as an alternative for fixed broadband services. Okay, that is it for this video. Thank you very, very much indeed for watching, and I will see you next time for video 15. Until then, bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.